this is my my take on some of the things that we've been talking about today. Um, but uh, yeah, let me just jump into this, and then we can wrap things up. So I wrote this right after the Charlottesville um, incident, right after we had the. Uh, actually, it was the day that I found out that this had happened at the skate park. Uh, is the day that I submitted this to uh, Medium for publishing. And by the way, Kirk Westfall, City Council member, thank you for being here. Yay! Woo. Um, <clears throat> We've had a few elected officials trickle in and out throughout the day, so thank you. So uh, this, this article is called Not So Far From Home, Confronting Racism in Ourselves and in Our Community. We all watched in horror as the fascists and racists took to the streets in Charlottesville. Together we mourn the tragic loss of Heather Eyre, and just today we learned of the Nazi graffiti at the Ann Arbor Skate Park. Now more than ever, it is paramount that every patriotic American denounce this violent behavior and abhorrent belief in white racial superiority. Yet we cannot allow these outward displays of hatred in Charlottesville and even in our own backyard to lull us into a false sense that racism only appears with, with Nazi armbands and tiki torches. Like the proverbial iceberg, these reactionaries are the very tip of an intricate and diffuse structure of racism that reaches across the history of our nation and into the depths of our own minds. Let us remember that it is a larger structure of systematic racism that gives them buoyancy. Our liberation from racism begins with an inward acknowledgement of our own imperfection and the inconvenient reality of our participation in institutions of racism, classism, and violent oppression. Instead of pretending that any of us are devoid of bias, let us remember that each of us carries a worldview shaped by our privilege. Defeating racism is a commitment to acknowledging our own complicity coupled with a pledge to continually seek to better understand how that involvement impacts others, particularly people of color. It is not helpful to declare our own moral superiority because we think of ourselves as tolerant or welcoming. These are quality, these, while these qualities are helpful, truly upending inner bias is a long, continual process of self-examination. Our vigilance and thirst for a deeper understanding must be ever-present. In that process, let us challenge and be challenged with openness and compassion. Ann Arbor has so much to be proud of as a bastion of education and progressive leadership. Yet just as we must examine our inner biases, let us humble ourselves enough to see that the anti-Semitic Nazi graffiti at the skate park is part of a web of entrenched structural racism in our community. Let us remember that worsening gentrification and lack of affordable housing in Ann Arbor have made Ann Arbor, the, the Ann Arbor metropolitan area, the eighth most economically segregated with the fourth highest increase in racial segregation since the last census. This is our own fault and we can't blame some fascists marching in the streets of Charlottesville for it. From childhood asthma to reported stroke rates, we cannot hide from the stark racial disparities and public health outcomes in our community. Data shows that life expectancy for a Latinx community member is nearly 20 years below that of a white person in our county. Or the startling statistic that black babies will die at twice the rate of white babies in Washtenaw County. This is not an abstraction. These are people right here in our own community dying because of the structural racism that permeates our society. When it comes to police shootings of unarmed black women and men, to the startlingly disproportionate rates that black and Latinx individuals are incarcerated, to the dramatic underrepresentation of black students on some of our college campuses, racism and discrimination cannot simply be excused by ignorance. Sometimes it is a choice. By our own silence, we are aggressively consenting and choosing to value some lives over others. As with our own inward reflection, we must not be afraid to acknowledge that it is happening here in ways that are sometimes hard to see, but which we must continuously work to change. Even as we consider our identity as Michiganders and Americans, let us remember how our history affects our present. Let us bear witness that after centuries of genocide perpetrated against tribal nations, we are still to this day seeing the overt oppression of tribal nations, nations' voices from Standing Rock to, Standing Rock to the Straits of Mackinac. Let us uncover the doctrines of American imperialism that have been implemented in our name by the military industrial complex with the complicity of our democratic institutions. Let us expose the mainstream media for the overt biases that led to the failure to label James Alex Fields a terrorist and that guy in Las Vegas now too, while a Muslim or Arab perpetrator would have been immediately indicted as such in the headlines. Let us resist the authoritarian tactics used by ICE as they tear apart families across our country. Let us never forget that slavery and segregation were sewn into our national fabric for generations and that our long-term impacts of that permeate our society today. Right here in Michigan, we have seen the dismantling of the Detroit public schools at the hands of Lansing politicians. We have watched as emergency managers have stripped democratic rights from black voters across the state and stolen valuable public assets from major majority minority communities like Detroit and Benton Harbor. We are all astonished when the state's blatant disregard for human life as thousands of mostly black families were poisoned in Flint. 
We, each, we have each held front row seats to the perpetuation of the same legacy of racism that enabled the fascists in Charlottesville to act. If we truly want to confront this moment in our nation's history, let's use it to dig deeper, to question our history books, to seek the truth about how our national story has at times been at odds with the values we stand for. The process of dismantling the vast web of institutional racism that propped up the fascists in Charlottesville will be uncomfortable because it will involve each of us recognizing difficult conflicts within ourselves, in our communities, and in our national identity. Identifying and acknowledging our privilege is indeed uncomfortable but undoubtedly necessary if we are to undo the enduring leg legacy of racism in our country. Yet in that process, our love of self, community, and nation should not be swept aside in disillusionment at the grandeur of our errors. Rather, it is that love that should be the fuel of our passion to do better. Let us envision a day when this nation has freed itself from the shackles of oppression and raci racism. Let us look to a future where your race does not dictate whether your baby will live or die and whether you get safe water to drink. Our love of our own self, our community, and our nation, uh, we must love our, our own self, our community, and our nation enough to be unsettled by inconvenient realities and transform our anguish into action to weed out at every level, the roots of racism that are surrounding us. Thank you for being here.